Hello, everyone, and welcome to this training presentation offered exclusively for the members of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Tampa Bay. This training is approximately 15 minutes in length, and it has been called Proposals Turning Into Contracts. We will look from the inside out, a different angle from the employer's perspective, and I hope you can get benefited from some of the content I'm about to share. It is worth remembering that this content could be applied to any type of business. It is a great pleasure to be recording this training, but firstly, just a brief introduction about myself. My name is Daniel Trindade, and I'm a procurement senior manager with more than 15 years of experience in different countries and industries, too. If you are curious and would like to know more about my background and even reach out, you can find me through my social media at LinkedIn as Daniel Trindade or send me an email to danieltrindade01 at gmail.com. With that being said, let's get it started and check some procurement content on how your business could maximize the chances of being awarded by contractors through a proposal submission process. These are the topics we're going to cover in this session. 1. Understanding the procurement process you are in. Let's talk about general hiring process rules. 2. Relationships always play a role. Why it is so important and we cannot underestimate the relevance of relationships with contractors. 3. Does proposal structure matter? Can proposals be attractive documents in the eyes of contractors? 4. Are you a good seller? Yes, you are selling every time a proposal is submitted. 5. Buyers want to buy. Let's focus here on the ones with the power to sign the check. 6. Scope of work. The cherry on the cake. Why describing well what you do means the world in a proposal. 7. Pricing structure. I can't understand your price. Telling how much your services cost without complicating it. 8. T and C. You better know it. What are these three letters? Yes, you should think well about having them. 9. What can't be missed? A review of things we should not forget before pressing the send button. 10. Best advice I can give. Final words about the whole content we will cover today. At the bottom of each page, I will leave you with a recommendation related to that topic. Understanding the procurement process you are in. Defining procurement. For this training, we should start with the definition of the word we will hear the most in this training, procurement. What does procurement mean? It means the activities to hire or buy goods and services for a company and from other companies through sourcing, negotiating prices and terms through a defined process standard procurement, and other types. The most standard procurement process used by most companies consists of sending requests for quotations to the market, expecting to receive at least three quotes to finally negotiate and give the award to the best one. However, procurement processes may vary from one company to another, from business A to business B, and there are other types of hiring processes still used by several companies. To name a few, one, approved shortlist. The company previously qualified and established an official shortlist to request offers from. To be part of this list, you should previously qualify. Two, direct hiring. In this case, the negotiation shall only happen with just one company. This is a trick, as some companies reach out to the market to get a feeling of prices, but they already know the right one to hire. I will give you advice on the following slides on how to prevent this situation. 3. Partnering is when one company is chosen strategically because of its networking or technical and commercial capabilities. Understanding the rules of the game. It is very important to understand what is the procurement process you shall be participating in. This would help you adjust your offer process to the situation. And most important, understand from the beginning to the end of the award criteria. If the request for quotation doesn't say clearly and you need to start working with minimum information about the process, you must simply ask the following. What are the stages of this procurement process? And when the award is expected to be received? Make sure you don't just go with the flow and navigate in the dark and know exactly what you are getting. Relationships always play a role. Business cards and quotations don't build relationships. I would like to stress the importance of building relationships regardless of the procurement process you may be involved in. If there's an opportunity during the process 
to visit with your future employer, to meet at a site visit, or whatever the occasion be, I strongly recommend you to not lose a chance to build new bridges as it may make a difference. No matter how good your paperwork may be, I would just say, don't underestimate the power of relationships. Get to know the player. Companies should pay enough attention to whom are they addressed the information through the process. As I previously mentioned, procurement process may vary and its team as well. With that being said, make sure to know the name of the players involved in the process. Pay a visit to the potential future contractors. This may not sound like a common practice whenever you are in the middle of a process, but it won't hurt, and most contractors would appreciate your time to visit them to introduce your company. Does proposal structure matter? Can the proposal template make a good impression? So, the answer to this question is yes. A decent proposal template does show the attention of the one reading it. It doesn't mean the focus of your work would be trying to impress with the beauty. The content will always prevail. A good template would facilitate your reading comprehension and understand clearly your offer. Too much does not equal enough. It is not just a matter of having too much information to impress your reader. On the contrary, you have to be clever to understand. Does your proposal have enough information for its specific purpose? It is not about getting a longer or shorter proposal. It is about assuring that you have what matters to get the job done by four hands. Even though you could be the one responsible to put together the proposal, it has been proven that it is worth having a second or even a third person evaluate the final version. Be open to constructive feedback in line with the proposal's purpose. A proposal that has other teammate contributions could eliminate minor and sometimes big mistakes on time. Proposal Elements Standard Suggestion there are some basic elements to be expected whenever reading a proposal. We could point out those elements likewise. Introduction, scope of works definition, price structure, and TNC. References. Although this could be an optional item in your future offer, but providing references for previous jobs would demonstrate that you are a qualified supplier with proven experience to execute the scope of work. Are you a good seller? Proposals are also company selling tools. If a proposal submission could be the first door to knock at your future employer getting to know about your company, then we can say that proposals are selling tools. Is this a good offer? The feeling to know if your offer is attractive enough to draw the attention of future importance is worth it. Asking oneself if that is a good offer based on its entire preparation is a way forward before that proposal is sent to the market. Sending to the right target. This is a relevant issue, as oftentimes I've seen proposals getting lost because it has not been sent to the right person. The best recommendation is to ask the procurement professional handling the process who is the decision maker. Knowing the right target goes together with what I previously spoke about. It is crucial to understand the hiring process that you are involved in. Follow up. How badly do you want it? Procurement processes are in place to be followed. On very rare occasions, a process goes out to the market as an ordinary bid process. And later on, the decision criteria change, leading to a new route for the employer. Companies that follow up with the employers until an award is determined show interest and somehow draw the employer's attention. Buyers want to buy. Relationship rules. We have seen that procurement processes could vary and also present particular things to be fulfilled by the suppliers. There is one thing for sure that it will never hurt whether you be awarded or not, which is relationships. Even though this may seem a separate topic to discuss, but this definitely can make a huge difference at the moment that you are submitting your proposal. Therefore, just don't neglect any chance to attend any meet and greet employers. Process time Line. Make sure that you know how long it could take this procurement evaluation process. This information will guide and help your plan, especially if you know that you have a great chance to get awarded. Buyer's magic word, discount. One of the most relevant factors from the employer's perspective whenever they are evaluating companies has been how much savings has the procurement department brought to the company. Discounts are buyer's closest friends. Therefore, companies should calculate well their offers leaving, or not, it's up to you to decide, room to give discounts. 
Prepare to negotiate. Being ready to negotiate during this whole process is also essential. Scope of work, the cherry on the cake. How do you describe what you do? Here we are with the most important aspects of your proposal, the scope of work's description. This is where companies can show how well they understand what they do by providing a complete and comprehensive explanation of the work to be performed. I would like to stress that a clear scope of work makes a difference and potentially could provide you with a competitive advantage in the process. Compliance with requirements. As we all know that each project is different from the others, being aware to comply with the requirements of the project is extremely relevant to keep your proposal solid in the eyes of the future employer. Deviations and assumptions what you can't do. On the other hand, the ability to point out what you can't do regarding that specific scope of work is also really important. Flexibility. Adjustments per request. There are some cases in that at a later stage of negotiation, the future employer could ask you to add some services to your scope of work or even evaluate the possibility to perform one of the deviations presented. Being flexible to accommodate employers' requests is always a good sign of potential well-future relationship for that job. Pricing structure. I can't understand your price. Price breakdown. Proposals pricing structure could be a tricky element to evaluate as they may vary a lot depending on the services you are offering and there is no specific rule on how it should be. The main thing to think about whenever pricing your work is to present it in a way that is easy to understand and covers all related to that job execution. It is worth mentioning that some RFQ, requests for quotation, sets how suppliers should price their offer according to that specific employer. If that is the case you find yourself in, make sure you comply with that request. Escalation. Another important factor to consider is price escalation if the work to be performed are in the long term. Having price increase provisions for long-term contracts you are bidding on would prevent future headaches on your end. But other things could also impact your price over the work schedule. Therefore, make sure you point out to the future employer what are the foreseen price adjustments and when they would apply. Keep it simple. The rule of thumb for this subject can't be another one. Keep it simple. No matter what type of pricing structure you may have, always put yourself in the employer's shoes to keep it easy to comprehend. I've seen some great offers failing to provide a simple pricing structure, which would piss some employers off as it would delay the evaluation process. T and C. You better know it. What does T and C mean? If you are familiar with reading offers from other companies, then you must have seen a section that presents several clauses as if you were reading a contract. Yes, those are the famous three letters that T and C stands for. Terms and conditions exist to inform people of their rights when engaging in a business transaction. It gives a set of instructions for all parties to a contract. They refer to the broader concept of guidelines that parties must follow in an agreement. It is extremely important that you have it in your offer. Elements. Several elements could compose a TNC. To name a few, A. Rights. B. Obligations. C. Duties. D. Roles. E. Responsibilities. F. Handling disputes. G. Payment terms. H. Limitations. And so on. Legal aspect. TNC carry legal implications of which both parties should be aware. I recommend you carefully review all contracts before signing them since many do not let you cancel them without penalty before fulfilling your obligations. TNC also offers guidance to courts regarding the intent and purpose of the transaction at the time it was created. What can't be missed? Checklist. A checklist with all the proposal aspects to be covered is a very good tool to rely on before you submit it to your future employer. The following are some of the things that you should review to make sure you have covered not only the basics but also the essential elements of your offer. A. Introduction. Employer's details. Business and persons involved. Project information. B. Proposal issue date. C. Proposal validity. D. Scope of works, deviations, and assumptions. E. Pricing structure. F. References. G. T and C. Best advice I can give. Recap. 
final words. Even though some of the aspects that we covered still could go deeper, but I strongly believe that if you do care to work out this content, it would show future employers what to expect in terms of professionalism on your end. I do wish that you could benefit from this knowledge and get your proposals turned into contracts. Conclusion. With this, we conclude this training. I would like to thank the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Tampa Bay, Madam President, Mercedes Young, for the opportunity to contribute to this institution and its members. Thank you for watching, and I wish you the best of luck. See you soon.